So now we're going to start to weave the side and we need four number three uh, weavers. And so I've been soaking just for a few minutes four weavers. And um, you can use four different colors or uh, two, two colors alternating. I'm going to use two colors, two natural and two of the darker green. And so just pull the rubber band off your spokes that were sitting there. And what I'm gonna do is it's an over two, under two weaving pattern, which means um, since there are an even number of spokes, the color bands of natural and green are gonna go vertically up the side. And I'm gonna put in four weavers in the spaces, in four consecutive spaces, alternating natural green, natural green. And I could have four different colors. I could have red, green, yellow, blue. Um, and then as I weave around the sides, the, the bands of blue and the bands of red are gonna go vertically. Um, but I'm gonna use the two colors alternating and it's gonna be over two, under two. So I'm gonna take, <clears throat> I'm left-handed, so I'm weaving to the left. So I take my right most weaver in front of two spokes and behind two spokes. And then the next left most weaver, the green, in front of two spokes and be very careful that you watch exactly which two spokes they're, they're coming out of. You wanna go just in front of two spokes and behind two spokes and down. And you always wanna push down and keep the spokes going almost perpendicular to the base. You don't want it to go way out. You want to push them up as you go. Then I take the next rightmost weaver and in front of two spokes and behind two spokes and down. And you just keep repeating this. And I push forward on my thumb on the weavers as I'm going. As you can see this, I'm pushing forward on the weavers, the spokes, to keep the spokes going up and the weavers I'm pressing down towards the base. So over two, behind two, and down. And this weaving, since it's over two and under two, the inside of the baskets, both they're gonna cover the spokes with weavers on the inside and the outside. So you won't see the spokes once you're finished weaving this. And what you do is you just keep going round and round and round, over two, under two, and as I said, I'm left-handed, so I always pick up the rightmost weaver. If you're right-handed and weaving that way, you're always going to be picking up the leftmost weaver and over two and under two and, and down. You always want to have the weavers down and out to the back so you don't accidentally pick up the wrong one. And always pick up the, um, for me, it's the rightmost weaver every time. And remember, keep pushing the spokes up. They'll want to flop back, but you need to keep moving them up as you go and holding them down tight as you weave so that they stay upright. And after you get a couple of rows, you'll have more control over this, but this first row or two is important that you start the direction of the spokes in the right way. So do this for a few rows and we'll check back in. So as you're weaving, around. I've done a couple of rows here and you can sort of see how the natural and the green, the color bands are going up. Um, and when we come to an end of a weaver, similar to on the base, you go in front of two and then in and leave the weaver in and just pass the spoke that it hits on the far side of the space that it goes in. I'm just going to cut that end and I'm gonna gently lift this up and slightly crimp with the wider part of my crimping tool, crimp it, and open up the space next to that spoke on the far side of the space that it goes in. And I'm gonna lift this little elbow and insert it down into the space there, just like that. So it's down into that space. So it goes in front of two and in, and in the space, it goes in the far side spoke that it hits. That's the space it goes into. Then the new weaver, I, I've got a new weaver that I've gotten soaking. 
I'm going to slightly uh, cut a point on the end of it and make a tiny little elbow, bend a little elbow by crimping it. And I'm going to insert it down into the space, in the same space, but on the opposite spoke that the, the end, the old end finished. And I'm just going to slip that down in there, just like that, and then continue this going behind two and out because the original weaver went in front of two and in, and then we're gonna insert the ends here in that space, and then behind two and out, and just keep on weaving. And we call that an overlap, or a, I forget what it's called, it's a join, an overlap join. And so just keep weaving and add new weavers whenever you run out of an end. Here's the other end, I'm gonna add another weaver, and just keep on weaving. But as you do that, you can even put it on the table like this as you weave, Make sure that when you go over to and under, you're pushing the spokes up and pulling the weaver slightly to the left to keep it nice and snug and keep pushing the weaving down, but keep the spokes going up. And uh, as you're weaving up, I pull slightly to, slightly to the left on these weavers. If you're weaving the, the direction, it's the right, left. And I push down on the spoke that it's going in front of, and I make sure these spokes are always parallel and running straight up. So I take this, hold that spoke down, and tighten it down. Pick this up, press down on the spoke, put it behind two and out. Front of two, behind two, and out. Front of two, behind two, and out pushing down on the spoke so that these spokes go straight up. After you get so many rows going, you can also go inside in the little ends that were sticking out, very carefully cut the ends off. So it's nice and neat on the inside, you cut the ends off. Now as you're weaving, if you want to create a little more of a complex pattern, you can do a checkerboard effect. Um, you don't have to. You can keep on weaving the way, you, the, the way we're doing now, up a few more inches. But um, after one, two, three, four, five, six rows, um, I'm going to look for the where I started. And you can see where I started, and you can also look on the inside and see where the ends are. And see where your basket started and end the sixth row so this spoke is where I started the first four weavers you're going to end the first of your weavers in on that space and end you just put a little bend clip it and then you know insert it in as if you were going to start a new weaver but you're just gonna end it like that and then take the next one in over to and in and then pinch, cut it past the uh, spoke, crimp it and end the uh, weaver and so forth and do the, re the other two like this so they're all ended. Now to start, if you want to, and this is optional, if you wanna start the second checkerboard section right after where you ended those weavers, insert your four, uh, the two dark and two light, but insert them so that, and put them, insert them just to the left of four consecutive spokes here. And you want to put them in here so that when this next weaver goes over two, like the dark one, it's above where the light ones used to go over to, and you'll create a checkerboard a pattern. So get all your weavers in here first, sticking out the front. You just insert them into four consecutive spoke spaces. Once those are all in, I'm going to go over two and under two, over two and under two, just like I was before, all the way around, over two and under two. But now, this next row, the color um, where the, the dark used to go up, the light weaver is going to go up and it'll form a checkerboard. So do six more rows of that and then end them and switch back to these other 
and do six more rows and you'll get a checkerboard. Now that you've got your uh, basket woven and there should be about 18 rows or the equivalent of about three or three and a quarter inches of weaving on the side of the basket. Uh, you want to make sure you pack the basket. So push down, go around slowly and just grip and push down on all your weaving to make sure it's packed. We call that packing the weaving. Once that's all done, then dip your basket in the water making sure to really soak the spokes, especially where we're right here where it comes out of the weaving. And we're gonna soak this really, really well before we pinch the spokes and get ready to weave the rim. Once your basket is really, really well soaked, put your crimper in and on the widest part of the crimper, crimp each spoke right where it comes up out of the weaving and do that all the way around. Once the spokes are wet and you've crimped them all the way around, we're gonna do the first of three rows for the rim. So the first row is behind one and out. I'm gonna take each spoke and carefully go down behind one and out. Just like this, all the way around. When you get all the way around and you've got the last spoke standing, Take the first spoke that's bent over and back it up a little bit to make a little bit of a bump, a bubble bump, and then take your last standing spoke, bend it over and push it down through it, just like this, so that all the spokes are down in place. Then the next row is gonna be over, three, and in. So I'm gonna take this one spoke and go over one, two, three spokes, lift the third spoke, and insert the end into the same hole that third spoke is coming out of and pull it to the inside. Take the next spoke and count one, two, three spokes, lift that third spoke, and then insert the end of your, the one you're weaving with into that hole and pull to the inside. And do this all the way around, just like this, all the way around, over three and in. When you get almost all the way around and you've got three spokes left, go back to the inside and just push out the first three spoke ends that you went in. And then you can weave these last three in. So I count one, two, and three is the third one which is bumped out. And I'm gonna go just over and in the same hole that it came in. Then take the second one, one, two, three spokes, and go in that hole and in. And then this one is one, two, three spokes, go in this hole and in. And once all your ends are in, once all the ends are in, then you just push these in completely firmly, pull them all to the inside, and then just go around and pinch, pinch the sides here and make sure these are as snug in as you can possibly make it. So that finishes row number two on the rim. Row number three is over two and down. So first thing is you wanna really spray your spokes very well. And throughout the whole basket, it, it, help, it, it weaves easier if you keep it very, very wet. And so I'm gonna take in my hand, three spokes at a time. And I'm gonna go over with the one on the right, and if you're right-handed, it's the one on the left. I'll take, I'll take the one on the right and go over two, and then down, and I'm gonna hold it down while I keep those other two spokes up. Then I'm gonna pick up my next available spoke and go over two and down to the inside. And if you always have two spokes in your hand that you're slightly lifting up, it'll keep this row down intact. So you pick up the next spoke and go over two and down and in. And then make sure this row is pushed tight to the rim. So you do this all the way around. So it should look like this. You should always be holding two spokes in your hand and then this row is, is nice and tight in. 
go all the way around. And then just like before, when you get to the very end, take the last two spokes and bump them up so you can push them in and I'll show you that. So now I'm all the way around to the end here. And like I said before, I'm gonna take these last, the first two spokes I did, and I'm just gonna bump them up a little bit. Bump them up a little bit so that um, I've got these last two spokes that are gonna go over two and in through that bump. And then the next one over two and in. You have to, you might put a spacer in there if you want to um, catch that last available spot. But once those are in place, that's how your row should look. And then the last thing to do, just make sure everything is snug. Go around with your clipper and in the direction that these spokes are going, lift each spoke carefully up and clip just under the rim, but don't yank it up hard. Just very slightly lift it and just slide your clipper right under the rim. And the, we call it going with the flow to clip these off. Once you get all the ends clipped, your basket is done. And uh, whether you just have stripes up the side or you try to checkerboard pattern, it doesn't matter. Either way, you've got a beautiful basket and the inside weaving should cover the spokes the same as the outside. So the inside and the outside are identical and you have that really nice decorative woven element in the middle on the bottom. Now let your basket dry really, really thoroughly and you might just give it a pound on the tabletop and make sure that the, the rim is tight and even and level. Uh, let your basket dry for a day or so and then I like to spray it with this um, 2x clear rust-oleum product you can get it from home depot and michaels and it's clear gloss and it have it has a uv resistant property to it and spray that inside now and it'll keep your basket um, color lighter and keep it from fading quicker and um, also another thing is there are a lot of resources for basket weaving if you want to weave more and you want to get close and weave with people there are basket conferences around the country. One in the Northeast I'm aware of is um, the Stowe Basket Festival in Vermont. That happens annually, I think in May. There are basket festivals all around the country. And there are also some great books. One book in particular that I like, that I've learned a lot of my weaving techniques for, is a, a, a book called Contemporary Wicker Basketry, and it's by Flo Hoppy. And that's a really phenomenal book that teaches a lot of great techniques. So I hope this has encouraged you to become a basket weaver, and I hope you weave a lot more, have fun with it, and experiment. Have a great day.